Before we start today's video, one thing you should always remember is to never look at the sun directly through your telescope. Looking directly at the sun with a telescope will end up causing permanent damage to your eyes. So what exactly is a solar telescope? Our sun is the closest star we have, and observing the sun is very fascinating. There is nothing like the thrilling experience of viewing the sun through a solar telescope. The most efficient and exciting way to view the sun is by zeroing in on a specific narrow bandwidth of light. This narrow bandwidth of light is also known as hydrogen alpha or H alpha bandwidth. The light arriving from the sun at H alpha frequency is coming from the layer of hydrogen gas just above the photosphere. To see this light, we need to filter all the other bright bandwidths of light. Only then you will be able to see the sun in this frequency. To achieve this, you need a dedicated solar telescope. The solar telescope is very different from your normal telescope. A normal telescope is for observation of the cosmos during nighttime, but a solar telescope you can use only during the daytime. There are several ways to observe the sun. If you have a normal telescope, you can use the white filter to see the sun. This white filter will filter out all the other wavelengths and will show you the sun in white. Before you use any such filter, make sure the filter does not have any tiny holes or that the layers of the filter are properly connected. When you use the white filter, all you can see is the sunspots and that's it. There is nothing much more you can observe with this filter. Another way you can see the sun is through calcium K filters. These filters are designed to upgrade your astronomical telescope for solar observing in the calcium K wavelength during the day. The solar disk and its features are very hard to see visually at calcium K filters. Whatever you can see through this calcium filter completely depends quite strongly on the observer's eye. Generally, younger observers' eyes are not very sensitive to violet wavelength and they can see more details through calcium K filter. However, older observers may be very sensitive to violet wavelength and may find it difficult to see any details through this filter. So most of the time, this calcium K filter is used for imaging only. The third way of observing the sun is through H-alpha solar telescope. If you ask any solar astronomer, they will often prefer H-alpha solar telescopes over white light filters or calcium K filters. H-alpha solar telescopes are expensive, but observers can see more details of the sun. With these telescopes, you can see the sun's changing chromospheres. You will also be able to see the filaments, prominence, plagues, and much more with these H-alpha solar telescopes. The solar telescopes will not only protect your eyes from the sun's harmful rays, but will enhance your viewing experience as well. Solar telescopes reduce glare and light scattering, increase contrast through selective filtration, increase definition and resolution, reduce irradiation, and lessen eye fatigue. Usually in a normal telescope, the aperture of a telescope is big, but the aperture of a solar telescope is not very big. Also, you don't need a big aperture for a solar telescope. A normal telescope has to capture light coming from a distant star or a planet. So they need a big aperture to capture that distant source of light. But the sun is not very far and is very bright. You can't even look at the sun with your naked eyes for very long. So the light emitted by the sun is excessive. For that, you don't need a big aperture. A small aperture will be enough for the solar telescope. And that's why these dedicated solar telescopes have very small apertures. A solar telescope is a little more complicated than a normal telescope. It uses a multi-filter system with precision. It consists of aperture, etalon size and its placement, safety filters, and out-of-band blocking. For getting into solar astronomy and to observe other details of the sun, you need a proper solar telescope. If you want to figure out what's right for you, then you need to have a basic understanding of solar types of filters and different types of telescopes. Solar telescopes have something called etalon. The etalon is the heart of the solar telescope. The etalon is nothing but a type of filter. Etalon consists of two parallel reflecting mirrors 
which are used to achieve ultra-narrow band paths. An etalon works like as shown in this image. It has two flat, parallel, semi-transparent mirrors separated by a certain distance. This arrangement itself is called an etalon. Light that enters the etalon and then goes through multiple reflections and the interference of the light emerging out from the etalon during each bounce causes a modulation in the transmitted and reflected beams. The resulting optical transmission is periodic in wavelength, Etalons are also used as precise wavelength references in telecommunication applications. They are mostly used to compare wavelengths and to study atomic spectra. There are a few concepts or parameters regarding the etalon which you need to understand to understand a solar telescope. These parameters are also mentioned in the specifications of many solar telescopes. The first one is the band pass. Band pass is the size of the gap between the reflective surfaces and the reflectivity of the mirror coatings in etalon. If the mirrors in etalon have higher reflectivity, then the band pass will be narrower. The second is the peak transmission. If the mirrors in the etalon have 100% reflectivity, then no light would pass through the etalon. If the mirrors have 0% reflectivity, then all the light would pass through the etalon and there will be no band filtering for a particular wavelength. So, the reflectivity of these mirrors is chosen between 0 to 100% and usually it transmits 60% of the light through the etalon. This 60% is the peak transmission of the single etalon used. The third parameter is etalon FWHM. FWHM means full width, half maximum. It is the width of the transmission profile at one half of the filter's maximum transmission, or it is the width of a spectrum curve measured between those points on the y-axis, which are half the maximum amplitude. It is calculated in angstrom. The fourth parameter is etalon FSR, or free spectral range. It is the distance between the two successive reflected or transmitted peaks of wavelengths by the etalon. It is also measured in angstrom. If the gap between the etalon mirrors is less, then the free special range is more. The fifth parameter is the etalon net finesse. It is the ratio of free special range and band pass. If the etalon net finesse is less, then it will not block out of band leakage in the case of finesse, the bigger is better. If the etalon finesse is 30, then it will have a good performance and will block out of band leakages. All these parameters mentioned are applicable to a single etalon. After the etalon, there is a blocking filter in these telescopes. A blocking filter is essentially a cutoff filter. It's a combination of several filters that are designed to provide additional safety to the viewer and remove all out of band transmissions from the etalon allowing only the transmission at 656.28 nanometers, also known as H-alpha, to pass. A good solar telescope has an energy rejection filter, etalon blue glass filter, long wave pass filter, blocking filter, red glass filter, redundant filters. And all of these filters are used to filter out the infrared and ultraviolet rays. As we mentioned in the beginning, sun can cause permanent damage to your eyes. So all these various filters are for the safety of the observer. This is the reason the solar telescopes are quite expensive. Usually solar telescopes are categorized as single stacked or double stacked. A single stacked solar telescope means it has only one etalon and a double stacked solar telescope means it has two etalons. You get really good views of the sun with a double stacked solar telescope and for most people it's hard to go back to using a single stacked solar telescope once they use a double stacked solar telescope. Usually with single stacking the solar telescope is expensive, with double stacking this telescope gets more expensive. Overall solar telescopes are expensive and it's for people who are very serious about solar astronomy. Some solar telescopes are mentioned in the description and you can check them out. We hope this video helped you to understand solar telescopes. If it did, then give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more such content.